Hello and welcome back to Ebenezer. We've got a great show in store for you. Coming up, we have a story about when Jesus was presented in the temple and a craft where we decorate cookies. It's going to be delicious. But first, we have a song, Jesus is the Hero by Michael Tinker. Do sing along. story and it's about Jesus at the temple. Let's see what happens next and it's a surprise to his parents. When Jesus was still very young, Joseph and Mary took him to the temple in Jerusalem. This was in line with Jewish law. Now at the temple there was an old man called Simeon. He had been told by the Spirit that he would see the Messiah. So when Mary and Joseph brought Jesus into the temple, Simeon realized that Jesus was the one. So he took Jesus in his arms and praised God. He said, I am now at peace, Lord. I have seen the Saviour. He will be a light to all people. 
He will be the glory of Israel. Mary and Joseph were amazed by what had been said. Simeon said to Mary, This child is destined to really shake things up. He will reveal what's in people's hearts, even in your own soul. After that, a woman called Anna, who was an old widow and a prophet, also came up to Mary and Joseph and Jesus. She gave thanks to God for Jesus, telling them how he would redeem Jerusalem. Mary and Joseph and Jesus left the temple amazed at what they had heard. And Jesus grew up to be strong and wise, filled with the grace of God. Now that we've had the story, we're going to investigate what it means. To do this, we're going to need the help of our feathered friend, Zelda. Let's dive into the passage. Who was Simeon? Well, we don't know much about him, other than the Bible says that he was righteous and devout. That means that he always tried to do the right thing and followed God faithfully. The Bible even says that he had been told that he would see the Messiah. He was very thankful to have gotten to see Jesus. Why is Jesus called a light? Well, the actual verse in Luke says that he is a light of revelation to the Gentiles. That's a lot of complicated words, but it means that Jesus allows all people to worship God and connect with him. We can see the truth of who God is and what he's like because of Jesus. What does it mean that Jesus will reveal what's in people's hearts? At the time, many people followed some very strict rules to follow God. But even though they looked like good people, their hearts were bad. They didn't care for people and they didn't treat the poor and sick very well. And it's the same today. You never know what's inside someone's heart. But Jesus showed people that what's in your heart matters. That you should love and care for all people and not just to make yourself look good in front of others. He knows what's in our hearts. How can we make our hearts more like what God wants? Well, it's God who changes our hearts and minds. But the more we pray and meet with him, the more he makes us like him. And he wants us to be like him, to always be loving and kind, forgiving others and treating everyone with respect. The more we do that, the more like him we become. What are we going to learn about tomorrow? We're going to be looking at a time when Jesus got lost. Where will he be found? You'll have to tune in tomorrow to find out. Now it's time for the memory verse. Today's memory verse is Luke chapter 2 verse 30. And it goes like this. For my eyes have seen your salvation. He means Jesus. Jesus is our salvation and he rescues us. So let's say that again. My eyes have seen your salvation. Now it's time for the craft. Today we're decorating cookies. You will need a plate. This craft has the potential to be quite messy, so you'll need to have quite a large plate. Some spoons for mixing. You'll need as many spoons as colours of icing you'd like to use. Teaspoons work best because they are smaller. A couple of knives these are also for spreading the icing, but knives can be sharp, so you use blunt butter knives and get an adult to help if needed. You could also just use the spoons instead. Icing sugar! This is what we'll use to make the icing. Cookies to decorate. Large and flat works best. We're using Morrison's cookies, but you could use any kind you like. You could even use rich tea or digestive biscuits, or bake your own. Food colouring pots. Again, you'll need as many as the colours you'd want to work with. We'll just be using blue and yellow in ours. Additional plates or bowls to mix different colours of icing in. I'm using plates to show you more clearly, but it's much easier to mix your icing in a mug or small bowl. You should p put a small amount of water into each, like how I've set up mine up here. Not too much water though, a little goes a long way. Hundreds and thousands can be used too to add a little bit extra to your cookies. And lastly, you can use cocktail sticks optionally instead of the knives to finely manipulate the icing. Now let's get cracking with the craft. You'll need to mix the icing sugar first. I put the water on my plates already, but if you haven't done that yet, make sure you put a small amount on each. Put the powder on the water and swirl it around until you get a nice thick substance, ideally a kind of syrupy texture. Add more water or sugar as needed to make your icing thicker or thinner. Do that on each plate of water, mixing in the different food colouring to get differently coloured icing. 
Remember, a little goes a long way with food colouring. You only need a tiny amount. I've chosen to use blue and yellow colours, but feel free to use whatever colours you'd like. Now we need the cookies. Get a cookie and put on a base layer of icing. My first cookie is going to have a white layer. Do the same with the next cookie. This one is going to be blue for me. Try to get the icing layer covered over most of the cookie, but don't add too much icing as it will make further decorating more difficult. Don't worry if your background colour drips off a bit. We've got the plate to catch any drips. Now you'll need to leave the icing to set a little bit. Perhaps 15 minutes might do. In this time you could check out one of our previous videos if you haven't been following every episode. Or you could make a memory verse poster and send it through to us. Now it's back to the cookies. I haven't really waited for long enough as I was too impatient to get back to the decorating. So make sure that you wait for at least 10 minutes. As you can see, our white icing has leaked slightly onto the plate, but never mind, that's what the plate is for. Now we'll start with the blue cookie. I'm adding a candle as my decoration because Jesus is a light to all people. I'll use the white icing for the first bit. You can use a cocktail stick if you have one to more finely shape the icing. We'll leave that for a moment just to make sure the icing doesn't run. Now on my white cookie, I'm going to use my yellow to make a cross. The cross reminds us that Jesus died to save us. Returning to the blue cookie, I add yellow for the flame on top of the candle. Ta-da! Finished cookies. You can always decorate them differently if you'd prefer. Mine are still a bit runny, but they'll be delicious nonetheless. What a great craft. Do send in any crafts that you make to the email in the description below. In future episodes, we plan to show your work and answer your questions. But for now, it's time for another song. It's a new one this time, and it's called Love is Patient by Michael Tinker.
If you'd like to make it yours, please join in with the Amen at the end. Lord, thank you that you came into this world so that we might know God through you. Help us to always live lives of love and forgiveness. Amen. Amen. That's all we've got time for, kids. Do join us next time as we hear about Jesus getting lost. But that's bye from me, and that's bye from Zelda. And we'll see you in the next video.